the inspiration for Dusty Strings and the, mo the thing that motivates us most importantly is how people are using the instruments that we create. One of the, the main points in our, in our mission statement is that we want to create instruments that will allow people to bring music into their lives. So Dusty Strings literally started out in the basement of our house in the University District here in Seattle. And it was a, a logical place to start a, a company on, you know, with very little capital. We had, we had no money. Uh, my wife was working at another job. She brought the, the income in and I just left my job as a bartender and took up this hobby as, as my full-time work. My day job would help pay the bills while we're building it up. Every dime we made went into tools. And uh, so I'd come home from work and then get to um, dive in and string and tune and finish dulcimers and sew cases and whatever needed to be done. So we, we just fell in love with that lifestyle of creating the instruments and selling them at street fairs. We'd hire another person to help and then another person to help. And by the time we moved out of this small little basement, um, we had five people coming to work every day. So we found this place here in Fremont where now we just have the school and the store and our repair shop. So um, this little nucleus that started here in Seattle spread and it spread and it spread and spread and, and uh, pretty soon we're serving music stores across the country. You know, that's, that was quite a, an exciting thing to do. In the shop, um, we've got a big roll-up door and um, a truck will pull up and we get a delivery of lumber on that. There can be um, a couple hundred board feet. And that means there's boards that are this wide that are 14 feet long and two inches thick and stack them up on the floor and then that's the beginning. We, we resaw the soundboard slabs from the spruce and mahogany. We uh, put those together into what we call the substrate and the substrates are then sanded and then we apply a veneer and the veneering process is, is fairly interesting. But we do a process of book matching the veneers and stitching them together with a veneer stitcher that, that brings the pieces together into a nice line and then those book matched veneers are then applied through a lamination press to the substrate and they will reside in the, in the soundboard drying cabinet for a period of two to six weeks and, and more, uh, waiting their turn to get glued onto a harp body. Once all of the components are made, then it's, then it's an assembly process. Uh, all of the components are stocked on the shelves. They um, will then be taken off the shelf and put into the clamps in their respective clamping and gluing fixtures. Then all of a sudden these disparate pieces of wood are now coming together and it's starting to look like a harp. Wood has always interested us and it's, it's, that's the satisfying piece too, is to create something that's beautiful out of all different kinds of wood. Uh, but then you put the strings on it and the hardware on it and you make it sing. We, early on, realized we would have to do that on our own. So Ray went and learned from a guy who wound his own strings and built a rudimentary string machine and uh, that lasted us for about 20 years and then we built a little more sophisticated one that made it a bit easier to make them. It's still an art form to wind strings. You uh, secure the core and stretch it between two chucks and then you tie on the winding, whatever the wrap is, and, um, and it spins. After stringing, we have, uh, we're on the home stretch of completion now and we have um, instruments then that get tuned up every day uh, for a period of seven days. And the tuning is a, an important part of establishing the geometry of the harp, if you will. It, the soundboard gets pulled up a little bit by the pull of the strings and the neck pulls down a little bit and we're, we're, we're getting this construction of wood used to this tension load that it has to support. 
throughout its life. But it's a way of ensuring that everything is just right um, at, the, at the end of the line and before we put it in its case and put it in its shipping box and send it off to somewhere in the world to some happy customer. And then you think about who's going to be buying this instrument and playing it and bringing it into their home and what are they going to do with it. And um, it's hugely satisfying.